Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another week of What's For Dinner. If you're new here, hello and welcome. I am Taylor. I share a What's For Dinner video like this every Sunday to give you guys some meal ideas and some motivation to cook more for your family. If you're new here, I would love it if you hit that subscribe button down below so you can come back and see my future videos. Make sure you leave a comment down below and let me know that you are new. Let me know down below if you're going to try any of these recipes that I've made today. And I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. It is Friday and tonight for dinner we are keeping it simple with grilled cheese and tomato soup. So I picked up a loaf of sourdough at Aldi. We're going to use that for our sandwiches. And then the soup is also from Aldi. I actually bought this a while back. It's their Simply Nature Organic Tomato Basil Soup. Our favorite soup is the Hearty Tomato from Progresso. But I decided to pick this up and try it since Aldi doesn't have that. So that's what we're eating tonight. I'll be sure to let you guys know how we like it. It smells really good. So I've just got that warming over here. I've got my griddle heating up to cook our grilled cheeses. It's just easier that way. You can cook more at once. I've got out some American cheese and some cheddar cheese. And then I'm also going to use Asiago on mine. I'm going to do cheddar and Asiago on mine. Mayonnaise is not my favorite thing to use for grilled cheese. I know a lot of people absolutely love it instead of butter on the outside of their grilled cheese. It's not my favorite. I've tried it in the past and you definitely taste that it's mayo. At least I do. Um, but I forgot to refill the butter dish so there was no softened butter and I just buy sticks of butter. I don't keep like margarine or something that's easily spreadable that when it's cold. So we're going to use mayo today instead. But yeah, if you didn't know, you can use mayo in place of butter on the outside of your bread. That's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to go ahead and get these sandwiches put together so that when my griddle is hot, we can go ahead and get these cooked up. Okay, dinner is done. Here is mine. My sandwich, we cut it in fours, and I've got some tomato soup. And then here are the kids' plates, the same. Cut it in fours, and then tomato soup. And I did taste the tomato soup. It's definitely not my favorite. We will be eating it, but um, I think it's a little bit too sweet. Some tomatoes are sweet, and I guess the ones that they use for this were sweet. But that is going to be dinner for Friday. It is Saturday and tonight for dinner I am making some shrimp fettuccine alfredo. Lily requested we do something with shrimp and alfredo this week so this is what we are doing. I am currently boiling some water or bringing some water to a boil back here. I'm going to add some salt to that because I always salt my water. And I'm going to make some fettuccine noodles and then I'm going to cook my shrimp. And I'm going to start off by cooking this in a tablespoon of butter with some Badia Complete Seasoning. Then we're going to use some sundry tomatoes just because I had these in the fridge that I wanted to use up. I've got some garlic, some heavy cream, some flour, and of course Parmesan cheese. I'm going to shred that with my KitchenAid. But I'm going to go ahead and get started on cooking my shrimp.
Once the shrimp were cooked through, I removed them from the pan. Then I added in two tablespoons of butter, about two tablespoons of minced garlic, and about two tablespoons of sun-dried tomatoes, and I cooked that for about a minute. Next, I added in two tablespoons of flour to make a roux, and I cooked that for another minute or two. Then I added in two cups of heavy cream. I stirred it often, making sure there were no clumps, and I simmered this over medium low until it started to thicken. I also seasoned it with some pepper, but I waited to add salt until after I added my Parmesan cheese later. Once the sauce had started to thicken, I added in about three quarters of a cup of Parmesan cheese. You wanna make sure you taste it for seasoning. I did not need to add more salt or pepper. Finally, I added in my cooked noodles and a little bit of the reserved pasta water and my shrimp. And that was all we had for dinner this night and it was so delicious. It is Sunday and tonight for dinner I am making teriyaki chicken in the crock pot. This is a recipe that I found years and years ago on Pinterest. It's called like five ingredient teriyaki chicken. So you just need chicken, chicken broth, some minced garlic, and then if you want to do soy sauce you would also need brown sugar. But I'm just going to use this teriyaki sauce today and it already has enough like sugar in it so I'm not going to add the brown sugar I'm gonna do that in place of the soy sauce and then at the end if you need it to thicken it you just need like some water and some cornstarch so I'm gonna go ahead and add this teriyaki sauce in here this is from Aldi and um, I tasted it. it tastes pretty good it's the first time I've ever used this one usually I buy like the Kroger brand one and usually I do like one pound of chicken but my sister and my brother and my uncle are coming tonight for dinner. So I have like two pounds of chicken in here. I did like one pound of chicken thighs and one pound of chicken breasts. And I just kind of sliced them into pieces so we don't have whole pieces in there. And I cut off like most of the fat. Now I've got two cups of chicken broth or I did hot water and two teaspoons of chicken bouillon. And then I'm gonna do like three teaspoons of minced garlic and then give that a good stir. Alright, now I'm going to cover this and cook it on low 
for probably about seven hours. Usually I do like six to eight. Um, it's 11 o'clock now, so dinner's supposed to be at like six. So should be done by then if I cook it on low. Okay, here is a, what my chicken is looking like. It's still thickening up a bit. I just added the cornstarch and forgot to show y'all. But I mixed like three tablespoons of cornstarch with some cold water and added that in and it's starting to thicken up. I'm just gonna put the lid on and let it sit until everyone gets here. I'm about to start making my fried rice. I will have the video linked down below for that and I will show y'all our plates when dinner is ready. It is Tuesday and tonight for dinner I pulled some chili out of the freezer so I had two bags of chili in there and I pulled them both out heated them up in this pan after they thawed and then we had the option of chili baked potatoes or chili spaghetti and surprisingly Andy was the only one who chose the chili spaghetti um, so that is his plate just spaghetti noodles with chili on top and some cheese and then I made some potatoes in the air fryer for me and the kids um, I cooked a bunch of them because they're really small and I did them on 400 for I think it was like 35 minutes it'll take longer if you have like bigger baking potatoes but then we have leftovers with those too so those are theirs and they just have the potato and I kind of cut it up to make it easier for them to eat some chili and then I did some cheddar cheese but then I also melted some cheese whiz for them and put that on top it's actually the generic cheese whiz and so those are theirs and then on mine I just did cheddar cheese and then a little bit of sour cream and some chopped up green onions because I had them left over from last night but that is going to be dinner for Monday it is Tuesday and tonight for dinner I am making lasagna so I've got my lasagna noodles I had half a jar of frozen sauce that I had made so I pulled that out, that out of the freezer and then I'm also going to use the straw marinara that I had in the cabinet I'm currently cooking up some ground beef. Um, I put some salt and pepper, Italian seasoning, garlic powder, and onion powder on that. And once it's about halfway cooked, I'm gonna add in this little bit of green pepper that I had in the fridge from last week when we had the Philly cheese sticks. This is in there, it's not bad yet, um, but I do wanna use it up. And so I diced it up pretty small so nobody would really notice. And I'm gonna add that to the meat. And once all that's cooked, I'll add the sauce in with the meat as well. And then I'm gonna make a mixture with um, cottage cheese and egg and some Parmesan cheese and probably add some seasoning to that as well. And then I've got some mozzarella. I might need to actually pull another block out and shred some more, but we've got that as well. And so I'm gonna go ahead and get my meat cooked up and add my pepper to that. And then we will make our cottage cheese mixture. Okay, for my cottage cheese mixture, I am going to use this whole thing of cottage cheese. Hopefully it's not too much. This is a 24 ounce container. I'm gonna use one egg. Um, I'm gonna do probably about a tablespoon of some minced garlic. I'm gonna add in some parsley, and then I'm gonna use some of this Parmesan cheese, 
probably about half a cup to a cup of the Parmesan cheese. Okay, I've got my pan here. My oven is preheated to 375. I'm gonna put some sauce on the bottom, do a layer of my noodles, a layer of my cottage cheese mixture, and some then some parm on top and just repeat the layers. I decided I'm not gonna grate up more Parmesan or more mozzarella. I'm just gonna use the rest of this Parmesan as well, and that'll be plenty of cheese. And then I'm gonna cover this with foil and bake it for 45 minutes covered and then take the foil off and probably bake it for another 15 to 20 minutes. Okay, I let the lasagna sit for probably about 10 minutes, so it kind of cool. And here are our plates. And this is the bread that I made, I think it was last week. And I said I was gonna freeze it in slices, which is what I did. And I pulled this out, still frozen, put on some of that Chef Chamois butter, which I am almost out of. I get this at Sam's Club. And then popped it in the air fryer on 350 for six minutes. And we've got perfectly toasted garlic bread. It looks like, it like basically looks like the kind that you buy in the box in the freezer section. So basically just made my own, but we've got that with our lasagna and that is going to be dinner for Tuesday. It is Wednesday and tonight for dinner, I am making some country style pork ribs in the Instant Pot. These are boneless and I picked up two packs of them at Aldi for really cheap. So I'm gonna put them in the Instant Pot and then once they're done cooking in the Instant Pot, I'm gonna broil them in the oven with some barbecue sauce, pretty much the same way I do my ribs. I have this rub, it's the Fox Brothers barbecue rub. Um, I bought it on, whoa, I bought it on clearance at Kroger and really you can use any rub you want. 
Um, to get the cook time for this, I actually found a recipe and it has its own rub. So I will leave that linked down below. Um, I decided to just use something that I already have. So I'm using this and then I've got my trivet in my Instant Pot along with a cup and a half of water. And I'm gonna add some apple cider vinegar, um, probably about a tablespoon and a half, I think that's what the recipe said, and some Worcestershire to the water. And then I'm going to rub my ribs down, which are currently in a Ziploc bag over here in the sink. I'm gonna rub those down with the rub and then cook this on manual, um, no, not on manual, on the meat setting for 18 minutes and then let it naturally release for five and then I will take them out, cover them with barbecue sauce and broil them. Okay, here they are after cooking. I'm gonna use some tongs and remove them from the Instant Pot. I've got a foil lined baking sheet and some barbecue sauce and I've got my oven set to broil. I'm gonna put them in there, coat it with some barbecue sauce for probably about three to five minutes and then flip them over, coat them with some more barbecue sauce and put them back in there for another three to five minutes. Okay, here is our dinner to go with the ribs. I made a can of green beans and I seasoned those the way I always do. A little bit of butter, a little bit of chicken bouillon and some badia complete. And then I made my Instant Pot mac and cheese. This stuff is so good. I think it's better like now than like Velveeta boxed mac and cheese. I still make that sometimes too, but this is so quick and easy to make in the Instant Pot. So I just, I love doing it in there because you just boil the noodles like in the Instant Pot don't even have to drain them. So that's why I like doing that. I will leave the recipe down below as well as the video where I made it. It is so good. And you don't have to use shells. I do like to use the small shells, but I also do elbow sometimes. And yeah, I already tasted the ribs and they taste so good. They were perfectly done in the Instant Pot to where they're tender, but not like falling apart so much that they're like you can't lift them out and put them on a pan. So they are perfect, but like I just barely touched them with a fork. Didn't have to use a knife for me to like break it up for the kids. And honestly, they could have done it themselves. I just wanted to make it easy for them. But that is going to be dinner for Wednesday. It is Thursday and tonight for dinner, I am making some bone in chicken thighs in the air fryer. So I have just taken these and I dried them off and then I coated them with this garlic Parmesan wing seasoning mix. This stuff smells so good. And I know I've seen a couple other YouTubers use it, so it should be good. So I've got that on there and then I just spritzed them with a little bit of olive oil on the top. And I looked up how long to cook these and it says 380 for 20 minutes. And it says to flip them when there's only five minutes left. I'm 
I'm gonna see what they look like when there's only five minutes left, but I think I'm going to leave them like this since my fan, my air fryer does have the fan on the bottom. So I think I won't need to flip them. But yeah, I'm about to pop these in my air fryer to go with this tonight. I am making this red beans and rice from Aldi and probably a can of corn. Okay, this chicken turned out so good. I already tasted it. The skin is crispy. That seasoning on it is delicious. Highly recommend making any kind of bone-in chicken in the air fryer. So far, I did the whole chicken and now these. And I did these because I wanted to achieve that crispy skin again without making a whole chicken. And I think chicken thighs are a good one to do. They're fairly small. You can fit four pieces in the air fryer. And so I did cook it for 20 minutes without flipping. But then I decided to flip it and do it for another five. And they are perfectly done. Still nice and juicy. <clears throat> Not dried out at all. So... Those are the two that are left. This is the one that I cut the meat off of the bone for for the kids so it would be easier for them to eat. And then, as I said, I just made this red beans and rice from Aldi. I have yet to taste it because it is very hot, but I will be sure to let you guys know at the end or here on the screen whether or not we liked that. And, and then just a can of corn with a little bit of butter and some pepper. But that is going to be dinner for Thursday. And that is going to be it for this week's What's for Dinner. I would appreciate it if you guys liked this video. If you would, go ahead and give me a thumbs up and subscribe down below if you haven't already. I hope that you all have a great week and I will see you in the next one. Bye!